Around this time last year, I had a bit of a eureka moment around my own self-doubt that had held me back and nagged away at me for years. Basically, I was being held hostage by a sense of insecurity and imposter syndrome. The change started to happen after I began asking other women about their confidence levels. Some of the women that I talked to are among the most talented that I've worked with, and I have yet to find one who told me they actually have a strong sense of inner confidence. Most, as I was myself, were dogged by self-doubt and anxiety. To realise all these brilliant people were being held back by obstacles in their own minds, the same obstacles that existed for me, made me feel so sad and frustrated that I resolved to shed my own self-doubt and hopefully help others to do the same so it didn't take them nearly five decades uh, like it did me to break free from it. But whatever age you are, if you're affected by low self-esteem and self-doubt, it is absolutely possible to turn it around. And in this short video, I'm going to tell you two fundamental shifts in my thinking that helped me ditch my self-doubt and step towards self-confidence. Before I do, just a reminder that if you want to see more videos from this channel, from product and treatment reviews to advice and expert interviews, then don't forget to hit subscribe. The reality is most people lack confidence. In fact, prominent psychologists and coaches often quote the statistic that some 85% of the world's population suffer from low self-esteem. Try asking among your own circle of friends, it will probably produce a not dissimilar picture. Understanding the scale of the problem was what shook me out of my own self-doubt and made me realise I couldn't let it continue for another minute. And when you consider that so many people that you know and admire and you can see how much potential they have, and they don't believe in themselves, then that's when you realise the same is true of you. It's also true that we've wasted hours, weeks, months, and probably years of our lives berating ourselves and putting ourselves down when we could have been, should have been, sending ourselves a completely different message. I look back to my younger years and the things that I wanted to do, like go into acting, Theatre was all I was interested in when I was a teenager. I loved performing, I was good at it, and yet I didn't really believe I could make it professionally. I wanted it, but I didn't believe it. And I was telling myself a lie based on a lack of self-esteem. And in the decades that followed, I would try and put up a good front and act all confident, but I'd be carrying an incredible amount of anxiety around my performance at work in particular and also how I was doing as a mother. And in my job as a journalist, I'm often asked onto radio shows to talk about topical issues. And I remember a few years back being asked to appear on a show called Woman's Hour on BBC Radio 4, which is a big uh, radio show in the UK. And I was thrilled to be asked. But in the moment sitting in the studio before the interview began, I was so terrified. I thought I was going to throw up. I was looking at the bucket in the corner of the studio and thinking I was going to have to make a dash for it. And then I realised I wasn't ill, I was panicking. The fear that I felt stemmed from thinking I wasn't good enough to be on that show and that it was going to be obvious. It's okay to feel a bit nervous, but it's very difficult to perform at your best when the narrative in your head is that you're not deserving of that moment or that you're not big enough for it. And it's not true. I don't believe there are special people out there. I believe there are just people who embrace their potential and see themselves as being able and entitled to success in the same way others are. And then there are a lot of people who are held back by false narratives in their head. When we mess up, we feed that narrative. Shouting at my kids or just getting it wrong with them is my number one source of guilt. And it rarely achieves anything and I feel terrible about it. But the reality is this is something that most parents experience and parenting is not easy. If we're doing our best, if we're showing our kids love and feeding them and clothing them and encouraging them, then we're doing fine. Losing my temper is not a reason to tell myself I'm not a good enough mother. And just the awareness that most people struggle with the same issues we do and the same lack of self-belief and low self-esteem, that was enough to make me step back and look at what I was doing. And that alone started the change for me and I hope it will for you too. The second thing that has made a big difference 
and this really builds on that awareness that is the starting point, is that I deliberately began to recognize, really recognize and appreciate my strengths. And I decided to focus on them more than my weaknesses. Because until then, I'd focused way more off on my weaknesses than my strengths. And that really dragged me down. Often we look at the strengths in other people and it heightens our own sense of, of weaknesses. And the trick, as I've now learned, is to be clear in your own mind about what your strengths are. Don't even try to tell yourself that you don't have any. Everyone has their strengths. Building friendships and relationships is a big strength. Being able to assemble flat pack furniture, I mean, who does that, is a strength. That's an unbelievable strength to me. Reading a spreadsheet full of figures is a major strength. I cannot do that. Being patient is a strength, something I find difficult. Being organized is a brilliant strength. We seem to have an awful habit of not seeing our own strengths while being all too aware of others. And that is the greatest irony of all, that while we're busy putting ourselves down, someone else is looking at us and building us up in their minds and often at their own expense. And if we can't recognize our own strengths, then we certainly can't value them and that feeds through into our potential. Numerous studies have shown that people with lower self-esteem typically earn less than those with greater confidence, often considerably less. So we can't afford to hold ourselves back any longer. Think about your strengths, value them, develop them, and stop giving yourself a hard time. Understanding how self-doubt was holding me back, and so many people I know, that was the turning point for me. From there, I just had to cut myself some slack and recognize and appreciate what I'm good at instead of what I'm not good at. Today, I still have my moments of berating myself in my mind, but I stop myself. I see what I'm doing and I nip it in the bud before it starts to drag me down because no good can come of it. So I hope that sharing my experience will help you on the way to overcoming your self-doubt. And to take us even further, next time on this channel, I'm gonna be joined by leading business psychologist, Caroline McCoy, and she travels the world working with business leaders to empower them to be the best they can. And she's gonna to explain to us how she does it, and I guarantee you'll be inspired. So be sure to subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't already done so, so that you don't miss what Caroline has to say. Until then, thanks for watching. And remember, I do love to hear your thoughts on my videos and your own experiences in the comments. See you next time.